Welcome to our service this morning. We are so glad that you are joining us today. Together we come to worship an amazing God. Let's worship and give praise to our Lord and Savior. Amen. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. We celebrate the loving presence of God in our life. May God's loving presence be a strong influence in our life. Nurturing God, we gather in your name to worship you. We rejoice that God teaches us about love and forgiveness. As we grow in faith, trust, and love for God, may, may our, our worship, witness, witness, and service bring, bring honor to, to God's holy name. name. Please join in the opening hymn, O Worship the King. join me in the opening prayer. Lord God Almighty, to those who follow the Lord Jesus, your spirit gives gifts to use in your service. May our use of these many gifts always serve to glorify your name, witness to your compassion, and bring good to others. We pray through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. For God so loved the world Come on. That He gave His only Son And whosoever believes will not perish They shall have eternal life We believe in God I shall hold to the cross. I shall hold to God alone. For His love has 
Our first lesson comes from Psalm 119, 105 through 106. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I have taken an oath and confirmed it, that I will follow your righteous laws. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Heavenly Father, help us to trust you with our decisions and our future. May we lean on to you with all our hearts instead of relying on our own imperfect understanding. Lord, give us clear guidance in our life. Help us, Lord, to have confidence that your direction is always the best way to go. May your word light the path our feet should walk. Today, Lord, we have a prayer shawl for Samantha. Lord, we pray for healing, comfort, and strength. And as she receives her prayer shawl, May her spirits be lifted as she wraps her prayer shawl around her. Lord, we lift up our spoken prayers for Donovan, Lankin, Zach, Nathan, Ellen, Sharon, Paul, Kathleen, Weta, Greer, John, Phyllis, Esther, Trey, Pat, Bobby, Winnie, Kyle, Will, Sue, Christine, 
Ashley, Jerry, Rose, Eleanor, Bob, Sherry, Larry, Gloria, and Ben. Lord, you know what they need. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we bring you our unspoken prayers now. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for our nation. May you heal our land. Lord, we continue to pray for an end to this virus, that you will heal the world in its grips. Lord, we pray for all those impacted by Hurricane Ida in New Orleans and along the Northeast. Lord, comfort them and strengthen them. Lord, we continue to pray for all the people in Afghanistan. We pray for your hedge of protection around them. We pray for all the first responders, medical workers, essential workers, and support staff. We also pray for our military. We pray for your comfort and strength and ask that you place a hedge of protection around all of our servicemen and women and their families. We continue to pray for those who are currently battling this virus and other illnesses. May you bring them comfort and lift up their spirits. We ask that you strengthen and heal them. Lord, we pray for Chickie's Church, the many churches in our local community and throughout the world. May your light shine through the church. Lord, we praise you and thank you for all that you have done and ask all of these things in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for your generosity and faithful giving. We are blessed because of you to continue to support our missionaries and local communities. Let us recognize our Lord and Savior with joy in our hearts. As the Lord speaks to your heart today, we ask that you prayerfully consider giving of your gifts, tithes, and offerings so that we're able to continue to be the hands and feet of Christ in our community, nation, and around the world. Now your gifts can be mailed or given via our given page at our church website at www.chickiesumchurch.com. Lord, bless these gifts. Bless the giver as well. Lord, use these gifts in a bold and mighty way to continue to grow your kingdom. Lord, we lift them up to you. We ask for thy blessings in Jesus' precious name. Amen.
you travel to an unknown region, whether domestically or internationally, it can be helpful to get a tour guide. A tour guide can take you through the region, informing you of the history that surrounds you. By doing so, they give context to the current state of affairs and help you focus your attention on what is important to see and do during your time in the location. In a similar way, the Word of God is a guide for this life because it is inspired. It is God's very breath of life. And as such, it can speak into our lives and show us what is important and where to focus our attention as we travel through this life. Let me say that again. God's word can speak into our lives. Our Old Testament reading today in Psalm 119, 105 states that God's word is a lamp which lights the path our feet should walk. The idea here isn't simply the direction we are physically heading in, but rather the way in which we live our lives. So, will you seek God's word for guidance in the way you live your life? Will you join with me now in prayer? Heavenly Father, Lord, open our minds and our hearts to your word this morning. And may you receive the honor, glory, and praise in all that we do. We lift this up before you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Now, this is our last week in a mini-series titled, More Than Enough, Resting in God's Grace. We can trust God to transform us instead of striving for some ideal self. In this process of transformation, we become more confident and who God is helping us become and the purposes he has for us. He grows us and equips us for the life we are to live. God gives us all we need to accomplish his will in and through our lives, through his word. Now the Bible provides instruction but it's not simply a source of information. God's word possesses the power to transform our very being. It is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hebrews 4, 12. Here's a great example found in our New Testament lesson in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I believe the apostle Paul is saying that when we read God's word, we are taught about God and his guidance for our everyday lives. Now the Bible could be seen as a great library on the subject of God. There is a history section. There is a poetry section. There is a section on theology and prophecy. And throughout it all, we can see how God is at work in this world and who God is by his self-revelation in word and deed. Now, by reading scripture, We are taught about God and his will, which then in turn guides us in our lives. So what this means is God's word can also serve by teaching us 
rebuking us, correcting us, and training us in righteousness. And it does so not for our own sake alone, but ultimately so that we can do good work and bring glory to God. So our challenge this week is this. Will you trust in God's word to be more than enough in the way you live your life? Now, here is a great biblical example found in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Now, it's also found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, and the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. The story is this, Jesus' temptation in the desert. Listen to these words. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him. And the angels came and attended him. So what can this story of Jesus' temptations teach us? The temptations of Jesus in the wilderness follow three basic themes. The first temptation, lust of the flesh. Jesus was hungry and Satan tempted him to convert stones into bread. The second temptation concerned the pride of life. Satan challenged Jesus to throw himself from a high place, knowing that God would send his angels to catch him. The third temptation concerned the lust of the eyes. Satan showed Jesus all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor, saying, all this I will give you if you will bow down and worship me. So how does Jesus respond to each of these temptations? He responds to each temptation beginning with three words. It is written. Jesus found power in quoting the Hebrew scriptures, which he had been studying since he was a boy. Jesus may be saying that God's word is final and I do not need to test it or prove it. See, God's word is more than enough. You know, we are often confronted with similar situations. Maybe the devil comes and whispers in your ears and creates doubts about God's promises. Maybe he says this, does he really care about you? Or he says, is he really listening to your prayers? And finally, maybe he says, do you really hear his still small voice? So where does this temptation start? It begins in our hearts and, and mind and in our deepest motives and desires. God's word affirms this and in the book of James, chapter one, verses 14 and 15. But each person is tempted 
when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. God's word also tells us in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, about the three most fundamental means of temptation. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the boastful pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. See, Satan uses the same devices to tempt Jesus in the wilderness. These three fundamental principles summarize any temptations we may face in our daily lives. Jesus gives us the cure for being tempted in our lives, the same as he was tempted in the wilderness. God's word. Here are some examples to overcome temptation. Number one, equip yourself into the word of God. Study it, memorize it. Number two, pray and be ready for temptations. Again, God's word tells us this in Ephesians 6.11, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Stand firm in the faith. God's word tells us in 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And lastly, Perseverance. We must become weary. And there's times that we just want to give up and give in. We need to persevere, to persist and continue to resist temptation. God's word tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, no temptation has seized you except What is common to man? And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it. Remember, all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Remember, God's word is a lamp which lights the path our feet should walk and the way in which we live our lives. We need to remember that it is written. God has promised us and His words are final and sufficient. God's word is more than enough to equip us for any temptation. We can trust in God's word to be more than enough in the way we live our lives. Will you join with me now in prayer? Lord, Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Show me the way in the darkness and difficult times in my life, illuminating the path you have chosen for me. When I'm uncertain and afraid, fill me with your strength, reminding me you are by my side. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, the truth is, each one of us needs a savior. We need God's wisdom and most of all, his grace and his loving care. The gospel writer Luke reminds us that Jesus died for our sins and after three days in the tomb, Jesus rose from the dead and declared victory over death. 
Have you felt like you are in a period of darkness or difficulty? Have you forgotten that you have a guide in your life? Have you tried to fill a void with things of this world that only God can fill? He changes us through his love. It is filled with mercy. It is filled with grace. It is eternal life that is given through faith, belief in him. So today, we invite you to accept the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. I believe he's reaching out to you in love. Christ loves us just as we are. Will you stretch out your hand to his and accept this free gift? This is God's invitation for you today, his gift to all. If you're drawn by the Holy Spirit to accept this gift and believe this in your heart, or if you want to reaffirm your faith, join with me now in prayer. Heavenly Father, I give you my life. I surrender my heart and ask for forgiveness of my sins. Lord, make me new and fill me with your spirit so I can follow and serve you all my life. And I pray this now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer, let's give God the honor and praise he deserves. This is an important step in your faith journey. Let us know so we can send you some resources and walk beside you on the road to discipleship. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our service is over. His service begins. Take care and God bless.